ever wondered what goes on beyond the gates? What happens in the private lives of the people behind the closed doors and shuttered windows? Who they are? What good and evil is in the minds and souls of these shadow figures? The visitor sees behind those windows and doors and gates. Let us follow the wandering steps of the visitor which take him to people all over the world in search of the secrets that make human beings behave in the curious way that is their custom. This time we follow him aboard a plane, his magic carpet of today, to meet at the end of the flight another man with an equally bad case of wanderlust. Because I'm delighted to be doing this, but where's Alec? Haven't you heard? Obviously not. Alec lost his shirt in the market, completely broke. Oh, so that means that you and Alec... Also completely broke. So you're waiting at the gate for me? Well, naturally. Well, she wouldn't have heard that I'd made a, a killing at Hylia. I heard that the tax department sent men to the tote windows to help you carry it home. So you've come to the airport to help carry me home? Sorry, darling, you know perfectly well that if you and Alec were both rich, I'd choose you. Yeah, but what if we were both broke at the well, same time? Well, then I'd... <laughs> I'd find somebody else. <laughs> oh, you're an absolute angel, Claire. Come on, I'll buy you a drink while they're going to bed. So. <laughs> Can't wait till they see us walk into Casey's together. Let's play it absolutely straight. Darling. Absolutely straight. Oh, I just remembered I've got to make a phone call. Oh? Yeah, yes, you're right. It's a lady. Blonde or brunette? You know, I can't remember. Well, you've been south three months. The colors probably changed anyhow. Oh, yes, but this is a very special type lady. Two heads? No, there is my daughter. I didn't know you had a daughter. Well, why should you know the sort of life I lead? Dashing around the world, chasing the horses from one part to another, running faster than the horses most of the time. <laughs> Name a better life. Do you know, I can. Unless it's doing the same thing with you by my side. It's going to be just like the old days, isn't it, darling? Yes, so long as my luck falls out. <laughs> That's right, darling. <laughs> Look, darling, will you take care of the baggage and meet me at Casey's in about an hour? Yes, master. Let it go. Hello, Harry. When did you get in? I just got in. Did I get you out of bed? Unfortunately, no. Is Leslie there? That's why I'm up, Harry, waiting for your daughter to come in. Oh, when she's good, she's your niece. When she's bad, she's my daughter. You sound more like a wife than a brother. Harry, it happens that Leslie has arrived at a crucial point in her life. What's the matter? Made in plain English. In plain English, Harry, she's about to throw her life away on a boy who's no good. Oh, you mean she's in love. I mean she thinks she's in love. Even though Evelyn and I have done everything we possibly could to guide her properly through her childhood, through adolescence, through all the times that her father should have been there, there's just enough of you left in her, Harry, just enough of the father image, to send her straight into the arms of the wrong boy, the very first time the wrong boy comes along. Wow, Chandler, you must have rehearsed that. That's quite a load. You really think it's funny, Harry? Love's never funny. I'm adult enough to know that. The boy is no good, Harry. Chandler, I need time to think this over. Tell her to meet me tomorrow for lunch at Casey's, 12.30. Good. I'll tell her. Well, I'm glad you've decided to do something decent for once in your life, Harry. Thank you for your confidence in me. And Harry, make sure, will you? I'm really terribly worried. The boy is just no good. In whose opinion? Mine. Knowing what my opinion is of your opinion, I shall probably like that young man very much indeed. So good night to you, Chandler, and give my best love to everyone. How is Hylia, Mr. Fenway? Oh, I took a little and left. Barney. Oh, they always say the first cup's the worst. 
Perhaps a cognac on the side might ease it down, Mr. Fenway. Oh, not today, no. Now, I'm having lunch with my daughter. I don't want her to get any bad ideas. I wondered who it was. Who what for? Well, it isn't every day we have a young female who's not only pretty, but a lady. Where? Will you just turn around, Mr. Fenway? Hi, Dad. Oh, Trudita. <laughs> Don't get up. I'm only a daughter. Oh, it's good to see you. Been a long time. You're growing very lovely. Unbelievably lovely. What about you? You don't look like a father at all. Oh, I'm the wicked that flourish like the green bay tree. Shakespeare. Mm -mm. Bible. Psalm 37, 35. And when did you become an authority on the scriptures? Anyone that lives as much as he does in hotels as I do, has plenty of chance to read the Bibles. <laughs> well, that's what you do with your time. Sit around hotel rooms reading Bibles. That's not the way I heard it. How did you hear it? No, uh, don't tell me. I've heard it from your Uncle Chandler so often, I can repeat it from memory. If only that black sheep younger brother of mine had to devote half as much energy to honest endeavor as he does to dissipation, he might amount to something today. <laughs> Uncle Chandler's got a hair shirt complex. Why is it he just can't bear to see anyone, even himself, do what he really wants to do with his life? Oh, most people are like that, sweetheart. They're never happy unless they're sacrificing themselves or, or making other people sacrifice themselves. You're not like that. No, I, I'm afraid I'm a sort of a freak. I happen to have been born with a distinct dislike for sacrifices. I just don't want to make them. Have anyone else make them for me? Well, nothing that annoys me. <laughs> Maybe that's why you're so much fun to be with. Oh, I have my ugly qualities, too. Such as? Well, I'm honest. Horrible? I never kick people when, I'm, uh, when they're down. Tragic? And I don't tell a soul, but I once did pet a dog. <laughs> oh, Dad, I'm just crazy about you. Leslie, let's face it, I'm just crazy about you. <laughs> and I'm just crazy about both of you, but would you please, for my sake, order now? Oh, I'll just have my usual, Barney. Omnibus looks very good, Mr. Fenway. All right. Fifth. Want me to put something on it, boy? See you later. Well, have you decided what you're going to have, darling? Mm hmm I'll have roast beer, please. Thank you, Miss. Roddy treats you as if he knows you're a human being, just like he is. Well, he ought to. I've borrowed money from him often enough. <laughs> Uncle Chandler heard you say that. He'd drop dead of mortification on the spot. The second left jab you've taken at Uncle Chandler this afternoon, young lady. It's a fight to the finish. Well, what's the matter? Is living off the fat of the land giving you indigestion? I'm sorry, Dad. I guess I just can't help it. I'm fond of Uncle Chandler and Aunt Evelyn, and I'm grateful and all that, but... Oh, don't sell them short, sweetheart. After all, they have given you everything a young girl could possibly want. I know. Makes me ashamed of myself. But I'm just not like them. I guess I'm more like you. It's a horrible idea. And I don't joke about it, Dad. It's important. I know. Every time I talk about you, they act so brave, as if everything's all right with you, but it really isn't. Do you know what I mean? You bet I do. But listen and remember, sweetheart, I enjoy life every minute of it, up or down, backwards or forwards or sideways. To coin a cliche, sweetheart, you only live once, but most people don't seem to know it. I know it. Do you? I remember, well, long ago when I was very little, you used to be away, sometimes for a long time. Yes, I'm afraid I was. Well, I understand about those things, Dad. I'm adult. Yes, of course. Well, Mother always worried, and the neighbors would talk. Uncle Chandler and Aunt Evelyn would come over, and they'd be so sympathetic. But I knew. All the time, I knew. What did you know? I knew when you did come home, it was always a party. We'd be so happy. You never came without a toy for me and flowers for Mother. You never came without gaiety. Oh, look, dear, let's forget about the past and concentrate on the present. This food, for instance, wasn't this going to be one of our festive parties? Oh, it's going to be festive, Dad. It's going to be just wonderful. At one o'clock. What's going to happen then? Somebody's coming to meet you. The president? Mm -hmm. Yes, again. A boy. It's a man. Well, why didn't you have him come earlier? Well, he couldn't get away. He's working. Oh, a sterling character. Oh, he huh? is. You see, he's only had this job a few days. And he thought it wouldn't be a good idea to duck out at the beginning. His office is way downtown. Mm, sound reasoning. What's his name? Jeffrey Curtis. Well, we'd better soak up on vitamins to give us some energy for the fray. Oh, you'll love him, Dad, I promise. Do you? 
Mm-hmm. Well, that's all that matters, really. But you can't live on it, young ladies. Dad, this is Jeff. Jeff anyway, how do you do, Jeff? Sit down, won't you? Thank you, sir. Going? So, you're the young man that's been bothering my daughter with your attention. Dad! I intend, sir, to keep bothering her as long as she'll let me. Barney! An orange juice for the young lady and a pony of cognac for Mr. Curtis and myself. <laughs> I knew it. I knew you'd like each other. Silence, young woman. Yes, father. I hear you've um, taken a, a... What do you call it? A job. Only temporary, sir. What kind? With Lawton and Holiday in the street. It's a good firm. You're lucky. One of the fellows from school got me in. School? Yale. What class? Well, it would have been 48, only... Well, along about my sophomore year, old Eli decided he could struggle on without me. There was a sort of row over a couple of crap games. It ran into rather big money, and I... Say, Leslie, I hope you were right. No, oh, be at ease, son. Back in 1925 or thereabouts, I seem to recall a certain college that found they could get along without me. There was a bit of a difference, though. It wasn't dice, it was terror. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't he a wonderful father? What am I supposed to say? Or shoes for the young lady? Tony acts as Jim. Confirmation. Omnibus is a shoe-in. Oh, I sure feels fine being with people like you after the stuffy characters I run up against for Lawton and Holiday. I thought you'd like the job. Mm, I like it well enough. I've done a lot of things I've liked. Somehow the morning always comes along when I wake up feeling I just can't go on doing the same thing over and over again in the same place. You know the feeling? Only too well. But tell us some of the other things you've been doing. Mostly with horses. You see, Dad and I... Well, I, I haven't lived at home since I was... It, since I left college. But I had some money from Mother's estate and I was getting by on that until until I picked up poinsettia in a claiming race. I thought I could build her into something really big. But she... she broke me first. But it was worth it, eh? Every minute of it. Up and down, backwards, forwards, and sideways. It seems to me I've heard that somewhere before. I'm through with all that now, though. I'm still after big money, but this time it's got to be safe and sure. Well, I wish you the best of luck, son. I've been looking for the same sort of proposition for 20 years. Let me in on it, if you find it, will you? I'll find it, and I'm not waiting any 20 years, either. Well, I'm afraid I've got to be pushing back to the street. For so? Well, I figure it's not good policy to start chiseling on your employer until the uh, second week of employment. <laughs> Thank you for the brandy, sir. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you, Jeff, and the best of luck to you. Thanks, sir. One break of luck and we'll be home on the Bill Bailey. Won't we, darling? Look, oh, Dad, I'm so glad you liked him. Like him? I'm crazy about him. Oh, up, sweetheart, on your feet. Barney, get it on the path. Where are we going? What's the hurry? We'll just about make it. Make what? The fifth race that you make her is a matter of life and death. <laughs> Just know it. Dad, what do you think of him? Omnibus, I just told you, beautiful. Oh, that's so teasing. Oh, he's a mighty personable young man, that's him. I knew you'd hit it off. Oh, it isn't not for the first time. It's one of the most wonderful experiences in life. 
I knew you'd be on our side. I didn't know there was another side. I've already told them that money or not, I love Jeff and I'm going to marry him. I wish you could have seen Uncle Chandler's face. Thought he was going to bust a blood vessel. <laughs> marry him? Is that what you said? Not so bad about that. Well, you can take it from the horse's mouth, sweetheart. You could, you could do a lot better. But, Dad, you heard what he said. He'll settle down. He'll change. He promised me he would. He thinks he will. I thought I would for your mother. Mother was different. She wasn't like me at all. I take after you. But she... Well, you know how bitter she always was, complaining and thinking how much things cost. There you have a picture of yourself, Lizzie. After being married to a man who hasn't the stuff in him to play a man's part or stick to it. He loves me, Dad. He really loves me. I loved your mother. I, I loved her very much. I gave her a miserable life. People like Jeff and me, sweetheart, we're not the sort of people a girl should marry. The love isn't worth the heartache that goes with it. That's the price I have to pay to belong to Jeff. I'm ready to pay it. But what about college and, and that course in journalism? That would be four more years of great neck. Four more years of that feeling that nobody belongs to me, that nobody needs me. I won't have it, Dad. Nobody can make me. Leslie, you're old enough to get married, but I think you're still pretty young and inexperienced. Do you want me to wait till I'm 25 and old and haggard? Your heart's pumping your blood so fast through your veins that your head doesn't know how to function. If you and Jeff had only wait a year or two... No, Dad, it's no use. Uncle Tyler's been plowing in the same field. But surely just a year or two. They're off. Dad, I want you to be sure of one thing. Oh, we will wait. There are more important things at stake. Boy, come on, boy, get her up, get her up on top. Get her up, don't you see she needs some daylight? Dad, I don't care what you say or what anybody says. I've made up my mind and I'm not going to change it. Sure, sure, now get him out on the rail. Save some ground, boy, save some ground. Dad, I'm going to marry Jeff. Don't let him swing by the easy miss. That's it, kid, that's right here, hold What is that, darling? Nothing, absolutely nothing. Now, now give him a breather, give him a breather. Save some for the stretch and you've got it in your pocket. Come on, boy. I'm afraid, Harry, this is one time I will not be able to help you. I've got to break this thing up. If it's the last thing I ever do in my life, this thing's no good, Jen. Why don't you take her away with you? Oh, she wouldn't go. What, make her? You can't force a girl like Leslie. She's, she's got too much spirit. Well, if she won't listen to reason, what have you got left? I don't know. I don't know. But there must be some way to make her see the light. Of course, you could always shoot the young so-and-so. Even that would end up like Romeo and Juliet. There must be some way to handle it. So I'm afraid you'll have to go to someone else for your answer, hey? Say, that gives me an idea. Will you take a rain check on dinner for me? Certainly. And Harriet, let us know if we can do anything. Thanks, Chandler. You've done enough for both of us already. This time, the bit's in my mouth. Women in love. They'll do anything for their men. Slave, suffer deprivations, ruin their lives. Doesn't make any sense at all. And yet women are supposed to be the practical sex. How does it figure? What do you want? The woman's angle? I can furnish the man's angle myself, thank you. That's well, perfectly simple. Women basically are emotional creatures. They have to feel needed to be happy. If a woman feels that a man needs her, there isn't anything she wouldn't go through for that man. If she loves him. Say that again. I'm not sure I could. I think I've got it. In fact, I'm sure I have. I'll beat that young so-and-so's time yet. Wait a minute. Whose time? For what? Claire, you're a wonderful woman. If you're trying to butter me up into doing this for you every night, you've got a wrong number. Well, maybe only a busy signal. Daddy, you've never needed anybody in your life. Don't start now. It's too late. I suppose it is too late. I've wasted my own life, and I've certainly never done anything to brighten yours. Here I am asking you to consider me and your plans. Well, I'm both 
selfish and stupid. But you haven't wasted your life. You've had more fun than anybody I've ever known. You've got every place you wanted. Florida in the winter, Saratoga in the summer. Oh, it was just Jim Dandy a few weeks of the year that my luck was riding high. The only weeks, incidentally, you ever saw me. Shall I tell you the real truth? What really went on without any of the romantic trimming? You are serious. It's an ugly story. Of hot day coaches, and bumpy cross-country buses, and fly traps like Casey's, and flea bags like the old Kinsey house. You've never seen the old Kinsey house, have you, Leslie? Yes, of course I have. It's down with the Third Avenue L. Ah, the old Kinsey house. What a place to be sick in. Lie there listening to the rattle of the L. Wonder if you could have enough strength to put on your clothes and go out and get something to eat. There's no room service in a stable like that, you know, sweetheart. Daddy, you're never sick. Well, that's what you think. I came pretty near to pushing off for good when I had pneumonia at Ascot last spring. Why didn't you let me know about it? Oh, just as you said, too late. In the days when I should have given you a home, I failed. Now that I'm getting old and tired and want a home myself, I, I have no right to clutter up your young life. Need a home? Couldn't you get a little apartment someplace? An apartment isn't a home, sweetheart. No place is a home unless you have someone to come home to. You mean... Daddy, you, you don't mean you want me. I need you, Leslie, very much. But you're in love with this young man. And I said before, I have no right to interfere. Well, maybe not for always, but... Well, we could wait a year or two to get married. And then... Well, then we'd see what happened. We'll get an apartment someplace in town near 116th Street. And I'll keep house. And I'll enroll in Columbia in the fall. And you can do anything you want to, as long as you're home for dinner on time every night. Why, because I better get started if we're going to begin to make sense, don't you? Started where? To look for an apartment. They're still not so easy to find, you know. What about King's host? Skip it, Barney, skip it. Mighty good horse, Mr. Finley. I know he's a good horse. I know he's a wonderful horse. But I've given up horses, Barney, for life. You're a kid, Mr. Finley. I'm not kidding. I'm serious. Deadly serious. The first time in my life. I don't like it. Not at all. Oh, I get it. You're broke. That's it. You're broke. I'll be glad to help. I'm not broke, Barney, thanks all the same. But seeing as I have to make a phone call and don't seem to have a dime... Yeah, right here. I have to call a man, my esteemed brother, to be exact, about a job. Job? You're not sick, Mr. Fenwick. Sick? <laughs> I'm not sick. I've never been sick a day in my life, and I don't intend to be. Oh, I almost forgot. Claire, uh, Miss LeMay gave me this to give to you before she left for the track. Tell Claire I've gone out of town. Tell her, tell her anything so long as she understands I'm never coming back. Don't look like that, old boy. I haven't gone crazy. But don't ever let anyone tell you sacrifices are fun. Unlike the visitor whose curiosity is insatiable, our wandering friend in this story finally settled down. Of course, this meant that he sacrificed the possession that he valued most, his independence. And it was really a very great one, for he made it seem like no sacrifice at all.
next week, once again, come and join the visitor.